Welcome to another episode of Hiring and Empowering Solutions. My name is Molly McGrath, and I am the creator of this Office Altering Podcast. If you're a first-time listener, welcome. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. As always, you can check us out at hiringandempowering.com. All right, folks, we are, you are in for a massive, massive treat today. Listen, I know you're going to squirm a little bit about today's subject that we're talking about. Today, we are talking about the tsunami of 2021 employee resignation and why it is forever change. Just this week alone, and we're only three days in, I have received five emails from law firms, from attorneys, and the subject line is Susie quit, Bobby quit, Tammy quit, whatever it is. I it, This is, I thought it was real. I knew it was real last week, but holy smoke, this is on a bullet train and we're not going back. It is forever, ever changed. You all hear me talking about this. Um, time and time again, preaching from the rooftops about employee empowerment, employee growth plans, appreciating your employees, but I don't want you to listen to me anymore because you're probably sick of me (laughs) talking about this. I want you to listen to a national expert to really speak into this conversation and what she's witnessing out in the marketplace, what she's seeing with the top, top, top companies that she is working with and consulted. And our guest today, I'm so excited. We have Leslie McIntyre Tavella. You all better buckle your seatbelts and get a pen and paper out and start taking notes. If you're driving, pull over. If you're on the treadmill, pull out your iPhone and open up your notepad. You're not going to love this conversation, but I'll tell you, you're entrepreneurs, you are leaders. You're always looking for solution and strategy and for looking problems dead, dead set in the eye and then having an action plan to tackle them. And that's exactly what you're going to walk away with today. So Leslie, thank you for being our guest. Thank you so much, Molly. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to have all the goodies in the show notes, how people can connect with you. They're going to be going to your website. As you know, our listeners are attorneys and they are forever students. They are professional researchers. So they'll find you. We'll give them all the ways to tell us a little bit about you, your business, and what I'm most excited about is your new published book. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Uh, Well, I've been in the staffing industry for about 35 years. Uh, I had my own company for about 31, started it when I was 22, and we were a corporate staffing and recruitment firm. A uh, wonderful company, built it to about uh, 20 million in revenue, and then sold it uh, about three years ago and uh, stayed with the firm to uh, handle a transition, and then really had a chance to step back and unpack my career and look at um, the mistakes and the lessons that I learned from building a business and scaling it. And so I decided it would really be a great time to put those lessons uh, into writing and hopefully into action for all uh, like-minded entrepreneurs out there. And I wrote a book called Framing Success, which is 20 Essential Lessons for Achieving Entrepreneurial Greatness. And it really um, has been wonderful to put it all together and and to um, really get it prepared and launched for my new second venture, which is uh, my new company called Culpio HR. Um, it's where culture meets people. And we are an HR consulting firm that will have a staffing arm that's going to be called Workforce coming in November of this year. So wow. that's what I've been doing. <laughs> Tell, tell us what that means for, and it just quickly, because so often I'll get phone calls from folks that uh, believe because I do staffing that I also do HR and I do not. Can you tell us a little bit about your business model? Sure. So uh, both businesses focus on people and process, but specifically for Culpio HR, we're going to be working with companies, um, consulting with them on their human resource issues. And right now, there's just so much going on in the world, both under the federal and state mandates, that companies are really just trying to build their businesses. And especially 
with all that's been happening in the past year and a half, they're trying to build their businesses back. And so they're very, very challenged with all the new laws and all the new mandates that are coming out and they can't keep up. And oftentimes smaller companies don't have an HR team of people. And so we're actually going in as consultants, either on site or off site, whichever they prefer to help them with their HR processes. Um, we're going to help them with the laws for their states, um, help them uh, with their compensation models, help them build uh, employee handbooks, a lot of process that will actually keep their employees safe um, and make for a really strong and healthy culture. And keep the business owner safe, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. the, like you, I hear that all the time. What do I do about, you know, termination in this scenario? What do I do about COVID? All the things Correct. that we're facing right now. And that is not my strong suit at all. Yeah. And you don't want to set up a company. You know, it's so important to work on the foundation of your business. And I talk about this in my book. Um, it's kind of a play on construction and business since I'm kind of a, a serial renovator. Um, I really talk about how you have to build a strong foundation for your business. And by doing that, you have to put the right processes in place. You don't want your employees constantly coming to you with all of these questions, um, not knowing, you know, not having a roadmap to follow. They need to have guidelines and they need to know exactly how they can operate within your business. And you want to be able to help people see the vision of your business. And so it's very important to, to put the right process is in place early on. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's hit it. And when you all go to Leslie's website at Copio HR, you're, you're really going to see um, the inside of her. I love your website. Tell, tell us a little bit about the Fox. I think that's important. <laughs> sure. So it was really very serendipitous. I must say we actually were doing probably about a week of brainstorming, trying to come up with a really um, neat name for our company. And we took the, you know, the iteration of culture and people and fuse those together. And that's how we came up with Culpio. Uh, and then at one point we thought, wow, maybe we should go Google that because what, what is it? Is there a Culpio? And we found out it's the golden Fox. And so we were very excited about that because we really felt that that uh, kind of was a wonderful brand for us. Um, you know, foxes are very inquisitive um, and they're gatherers. And so we thought that was really neat how that kind of all organically came together. Oh, I absolutely love that. Oh, and a beautiful website, beautiful, beautiful website really Thank can you. see where you are. Um, your vision, your mission, your core values come alive in your website. So just bravo on that. I have to see the you. moment Thank I pulled so it up. Much. Okay. All right. Everybody's sick of hearing me talk about you have to empower your employees, make sure that you treat them well. You want to make certain that they don't leave and the days are over of they should be lucky to have a job and a paycheck. And I love when you and I were kind of having our coffee clutch before we started recording and you use this term, I'm like, that is it, the tsunami of the 2020 employee resignation, then you went as far to say, and why it is forever changed. So kick us off. Talk to our listeners about why they truly need to listen up because this isn't a conversation about it's coming. It is here and it's it here has to arrived. Stay. <laughs> yeah, alive. it has arrived. And as I said to you, we are forever changed. You know, I hear I hear clients say a lot, um, you know, well, when we go back to normal, well, we're we're never going back. That work life that we had before, that is now in the past. And, and people are now forever changing the way that we're going to work in the future. And the next five years, I think, are going to be very interesting because we are having a tsunami of resignations. Um, and I've, for the first time in my career in, in staffing, again, 35 year span, I've never seen so many people resigning without even having a job. So I think what really has happened to unpack it all is number one, people, employees have really had a chance to get a glimpse behind the corporate curtain, if you will. And so companies display 
um, you know, these wonderful values and they espouse all of these um, values that they live by. And, you know, we, we want to, we care about our people and, you know, we want to take care of our employees. We put our employees first, people over profit. I have to be honest with you. We all now know what companies really do that and what companies don't. And employees have had the opportunity to see that. Um, there is such a wellness problem going on right now in the world because of what has happened. And if companies haven't taken the time throughout the very beginning moments of what has happened in the past you know, year and a half um, and had contact with their employees consistently, if they haven't been in front of this, um, if they haven't taken the time to check in, not about the job, about the individuals, how are you? Is there anything we can do for you? How are you feeling? How are you working? Do you have everything you need? Can we modify something for you? If these things haven't happened, the whole facade of what these companies have been espousing is gone. And now employees recognize what their companies really stand for and how much they really care about them. And so I think this is one of the true reasons why people are leaving their positions without even having another job. They have had the time to really unpack their personal lives and really see what's most important to them. And that company is no longer on the top of that list because that company didn't care about them. Wow, you said so much there. And I just wanna piggyback on that. When a few things, you are absolutely right. And, and I agree with you. Employees are very aware that they don't need another job before they leave. People see that you've bounced around every two years, what have you. That's not a concern anymore at all. It hasn't been a concern since 2008 during the great layoff. It hasn't been because when um, entrepreneurs, when recruiters, when staffing agencies and HR are looking at that, they know that there is a story behind every one of them that cannot be told to, because you have to keep your resume so condensed in order Correct. to be seen and visible. And, you know, one of the te messages, the email that I got, I'm not I, honest, I'm not lying. It was yesterday morning, I wake up and it says, Yanni quit. And in there, it's screenshots of text message between the employee, brand new employee, they haven't even been there 30 days, I don't think yet, to the attorney that we placed and we recruit. So we have to go back in and do it per our guarantee. And I see these screenshots and, and they say, um, the, the attorney says something like, well, um, you know, if you want to come in early tomorrow, I, I finally have time to meet with you. So right there, it's already telling me they've you're, you've given them zero time, attention, feedback, and proper training. Mm -hmm. And then the employee is replying and saying, I'm on the bathroom floor. I am deathly sick right now. Mm -hmm. I am, you know, I can't even pick my head up. And I know this isn't the right way to tell you, but by the way, I don't think I'm a right fit. I think you need to find somebody who, who understands the industry wholly, fully, and is totally trained. That's mm -hmm. it. Best mm -hmm. of luck. I really enjoy you and your company, but I, I'm not going to come back. And the employees on their deathbed proverbially and, mm -hmm. you know, and at that point is making a decision. There's so much to be said about that text message. I'm like, I can tell already they got no time, no attention, no training, not, or maybe little. Let me mm -hmm. just say that. Absolutely. Not be, and not the proper way to do it. And here's somebody who is sick and they're like, it does doesn't matter. I don't need to deal with this. And, and who knows if the stress they were under for 30 days brought on the illness, that's a whole nother subject. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But it, I'm seeing it so often and recruiters are vicious right now. It's shark infested waters. And if, and during the pandemic, people finally got visible people that weren't on LinkedIn, <laughs> they weren't on right. Facebook or they didn't put a tremendous amount of time. Their, their cover page was their kid's soccer ball. And now they're they're like, hmm, I'm, I'm, I have time to screw around in Canva. I'm going to update my uh, my, per, my my profile. I'm going to start putting some time in this because I really don't want to watch five more episodes of MASH. So they're like, <laughs> people are investing in it and they're visible like it's never true. before. 
And so if, if I, to talk that story, number one, and the second story I really want to tell you that also happened this week is my brother is a very, 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 very big, um, he does, uh, construction um, and environmental cleanup recruiting in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And he works, he has a very big job and um, he's been there forever and he got sick and went in the hospital. Right. Oh, Um, no, no, this is a true story. And his senior vice president is blowing up his phone. When are you coming back? When do you think you're going to come back? Never. How are you? Never anything about the wellness. Never take the time. Don't worry. Susie's going to handle it or what have you. In fact, when you're, when you're feeling better, take an additional week to just rehydrate and everything else. And, you know, he literally called me over the weekend and he said, I quit. I'm like, what? I'm like, do you have yeah. another job? He's like, no. Oh my God. I'll See what I mean? By yeah. End of day. No. Yeah. And his, I go, why? He goes, it just hit me. I'm sitting there on my deathbed basically. And not once was it like, when, are, how are you? Not once was it, you know, I know you can't go into hospitals and what have you, but you could deliver DoorDash or flowers or something. Of no, course. nothing, nothing about the human. Absolutely. And you know what? It, it's all, it's gotten real now. So, you know, when you, when we were zooming with people during COVID and, and still, you know, you would see their dogs come in, you would see their kids on their laps. I mean, these are humans. These are humans. And people always say we put our people first and I hate to say it, but it's just not true in some cases. And so this is, this is really now a, a true look under the microscope to say, okay, the companies that are retaining their talent and li- and listening to their people and, and saying, listen, we get it now. You've been home. You, you've been traumatized. It's been really difficult. If you want to have, um, you know, a, a work from home or some sort of, a, you know, a, a job share or some sort of a special situation that benefits your life and makes you more comfortable, then we want to be able to be a part of that because we value you enough where we want to make the modifications to our, you know, for our employees. Those are the companies that are going to keep their people. <laughs> I love it. You brought the dog and the kids and yeah, seeing them. It's as human. These human. are human beings. Yes. I always say that you're hiring human beings, not human doings. I yeah. always say that. And it's interesting. A lot of times I'll get in the Zoom rooms and facilitate when it comes down to a final candidate, what have you. And so often in the debrief, they're like, well, I'm not really sure because um, I didn't really like their lighting. They didn't take the proper time to set up their background and what ha- I'm like, oh. Oh my gosh. Or they'll send me over these ads that will say, you know, I'm like, give me just a job description. I'm going to write the ad. You and I could do a whole nother podcast on ads, oh, placing oh, ads. Oh, we could. Please, let's do that. <laughs> but it's so funny. <laughs> they'll send me these ads and they'll say, blah, 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 comma, with attorney supervision, blah, 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 with attorney supervision. I'm like, oh my gosh, do you understand that you're communicating that you are an absolute control freak and that you have, you have absolutely no faith in the human beings that you're employing and you do not believe in empowerment and leadership. It's just correct. Correct. See, that's the shift that I don't think companies have quite figured out yet. It's not about them. The audience is about attracting the candidates to the company. So you really, they, you shouldn't be talking about all these things that you have to do. It's about why would someone want to work at this brand? You know, we had this conversation in my office the other day. I have this delightful younger gal who works with me. She's much younger than me. And uh, she said, it's so interesting. When you talk to people, you ask them, um, what do you do? She said, when I talk to people, I ask them, where do you work? And that stopped me in my tracks because I thought, wow, that really is the brag behind the brand. And I talk about this in my book, meaning young people want to get behind a brand. They want to work for a company that has a mission, um, that they stand for something because they infuse that into their daily lives. Uh, My generation is more about you know, what do you do? What, what is your career? Um, but that's, that's not where it is anymore. And, and the drive for companies in order to really recruit people that are culturally aligned is they have to be talking about what's the hook, 
How are we going to bring these people to us? How do we engage our audience of talent, of future talent? And what's the why? Why do they want to work here? What are our differentiators? Why are we different from other companies? And then what is our mission? What do we stand for? What can we brag about? What do we believe in? And then you talk about, at the very end of the interview, you talk about the non-negotiables, the must-haves. I call this my hymn. H-Y-M-N, the non-negotiables, the things that they really have to do in the job that you can't live without, that you must have. But it doesn't begin with the duties. It starts with the hook and the why. Oh, I, I absolutely love that. Wow. I am... Um... Oh, I could go on. All right. I'm I'm going to stop myself and get back to the topic because I was like, wow, rabbit hole right there. <laughs> Squirrel. It's hard not I, to go down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Hey. All right. So listeners, hopefully you're really understanding the truth of this. Tell us a little people. Number one, they don't need another job. Number two, they don't need your stinking job if you're not treating them and paying them well from a place of mental, emotional, from spiritual to energetic to creating a culture that people do not want to leave. And it is it's not changing. It really, truly is not changing. People are valuing their mental health. They are valuing their time and energy that back in the 90s and early 2000s, we talked about work life balance, blah, blah. That is it's like that. It's not even that it's so much grander and deeper than that. So tell us, Leslie, what people can do now to really, truly understand from the second they hit stop on this podcast that they can walk into their business and and be able to adopt and deploy and believe and have an unwavering commitment to stopping the train in their business. Because our listeners are by and large small solo businesses. They're not huge Mm -hmm. corporations, Mm -hmm. which it matters even more than- Absolutely. It matters so much more because- you don't have an HR team. You don't have endless capital to train on board. We all know how Correct. exhausting that is. And also, also, where do you get your best employees from your friends and families and what have you? So when somebody goes on Facebook or LinkedIn and changes that they're no longer working at the Smith Law Firm and they went to the Jones Law Firm, what do people put in the comment? What happened? Why'd you leave? When did you leave? And you better hope that the person doesn't share the story that the culture sucked. Exactly. So that so you bring up such good points. So the first thing you need to do, and and I just this is so simple, you need to understand that your people and most people are not leaving. This is statistically proven. They're not leaving because of money, solely because of money. So everyone seems to think that it's all about money. It's not. It's all about recognition and value. And so talking to your people is one of the most important things that you can do. And when I say that, I mean consistently and with form. So we used to talk to our employees every 90 days. I used to set a meeting with each of our employees and talk with them. Uh, We did this after many, many years, by the way, of not doing it. So I don't want to sound as if we did it forever. We realized that we had a disconnect in our own company, that I was not speaking to the people and they wanted to, you know, talk with me. And I wanted to learn and, and talk with them and find out, you know, what was driving them, what was holding them back. Where did they where did they need, you know, more training? Were there tools that we could provide for them? endless questions. So whether it's the owner or whether it's the management, you have to have consistent time where you speak to your employees and you find out really what they need and and what is really going on in their world. If you do this, by the way, you will get the most incredible amount of feedback that will help you grow your business. And happy, happy employees make happy customers. And again, customers want to deal with people that have been with your firm for a long time. They love it if they can call and always talk to the same person or see the same person. So this is so important. Number two, culture. You have got to build a strong culture. And by doing that, again, happy people, how do you work the referral system? 
if you don't have some sort of a referral system in your business, you should seriously consider getting one because the best referrals are going to come from your internal people. So empower them to go out and be brand ambassadors for your business. Build a strong company, talk with your people, build a referral program, have your employees be brand ambassadors. Those are just a few things that you can do. Oh, I'll tell you two things. One, I love, love, love what you said. I saw Tony Robbins speak uh, last week or at a conference. And I love what he said when, when you're talking about happy people, happy customers, how it's just so Perfect. insidious and infectious. But one thing he said it, it, that really stuck out to me is, Progress equals happiness. And so if you can even, because happiness is like, oh, kumbaya, blah, 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 especially in the business world. If you can think of it this way, and I love what Leslie said, progress. So progress is start meeting with your people. And maybe right now you're doing annual reviews or quarterly reviews or what have you. Progress meeting with them frequently, weekly, mm -hmm. in your weekly stakeholders meeting, doing um, one-on-ones monthly, mm -hmm. taking them out to lunch and not treating it like a clinical review, what have you. That is how you get to happiness. That is so progress, progress, progress in the right direction. And what I love what you said, first and foremost, and I'm telling you right now, you have the toughest crowd on the planet to adopt and believe and get behind what you're saying of spending time with your employees. So often I'll get phone calls from law firm owners and attorneys saying, I don't have time to train them. I don't have time to spend with my people. And that's why they have revolving doors. So there has to be a Correct. massive, massive, massive groundswell mindset shift here in regards to guys, it is no longer a recommendation. It is an absolute, if you want to stay in business or otherwise you're going to be a true, true solopreneur operating with just you and the janitor in the building because people aren't tolerating it. And guess what? They don't have to anymore because once they have awareness, then they have two choices to sit in awareness, hell or do something about it. And employees are no longer sitting in awareness hell and there's they, they don't even want to listen to themselves complain about their jobs anymore. So I love what you're saying. How can, and if you could just quickly speak into this, because I'm not kidding you, this is the toughest crowd where mm -hmm. they will not spend time with their employees. They'll do, you know, their standard meeting. Oh, they'll spend all day doing a case review meeting because guess what? That means money and that means them not getting fired and they could take mm -hmm. money out of the trust account. Mm -hmm. But they will, it's a hard crowd to get them to and pour into their employees and spend time if it's not talking about a matter or a case. Mm -hmm. I would imagine. You know, it's interesting. Bill Gates said, I think this year or, or um, last year, um, busy is the new stupid. And uh, we actually, oh, I um, love that. isn't that great? And uh, I actually counseled many of my managers um, about this because to me, when, when, when an employee comes to you and asks you for their help, uh, for your help or for uh, advice or, you know, that they need something, the worst thing that you can do, the worst words that can come out of your mouth are, I'm busy, or I have time for you now, or it, it's, that is, that is so, um, that just makes me feel so unhappy that someone would say that. And I made a point when I had my first business to really try to never say, I'm busy because you know what? It might be, um, why don't we schedule that for 3 p.m. this afternoon? Let's set that meeting for four o'clock. I'd love to speak to you at three. You know, think just, you know, being mindful of the way that you frame things to people is really so important because when you say I'm too busy, you basically are saying, I'm not interested. I don't care figure it out on your own. And so again, if you if they can't if people can't understand that they have to make an investment now in their talent. You know, I just I really can't imagine how I can explain that better. By making an investment in the talent that you have, you're leveling up all of your people and 
everything will become so much more efficient. Uh, again, your culture will be better. Your um, referral rate into your business will be better. You will have happier people. You will have happier clients, which means you can then take on more business and you can continue to build your business. I think the cost of a bad hire is $13,500. Um, and, and I forget how many hours of an investment. So having constant turnover in your company is the very last thing that you want to do because it's absolutely the most inefficient way to run your business. So keeping your people has to be top of mind. Yes, yes, yes. And not only that, I'm sure those numbers are skyrocketing by the Mm -hmm. time we hit end on this podcast too, but Mm -hmm. not only that of the cost, the time, the energy, all that. The other thing is that when you go back in to rehire, you're so clouded and jaded, jaded and muddy. And, and so I'll have people that you're picking from your past, so to speak, they'll come back and they'll be like, you know, I want you to make sure that they run them through this test, run them through this assessment, do this, do that. Because the person that just left, you find all the reasons of all the things that they did and blame it on their skill set and their knowledge and their, or the lack of, Mm -hmm. and really versus and then you you put the next candidate, you're already having your mindset that they're going to suck too. And you're mm-hmm. already setting them up. Now you're putting them through this battleground and the this, this hiring process that is so abusive and jaded that you're, and, and, and you're not even coming at it and approaching it from a place of looking at you and what you can do to change your culture, number one. And then number two, Deep in your subconscious, you already have a mindset that employee, it, it's the employee problem. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, Leslie, we can go on and on and on forever. <laughs> and I, I, I truly, truly, I truly mean this. I'm going to have you back. I really oh, I would to- love to come back, Molly. Thank you. There's so much to talk about. I would love to talk about helping companies build better job descriptions so that they can attract more talent and, and, and a better process. I have something called 20 touches or less. I have some really great tools that I think could really help companies. Okay. All right. That's it. Listeners, you're going to hold me accountable. We're going to Leslie and I'll schedule that one before we even end today. Tell us in closing, how can our listeners um, find you and hear a little bit more about your book? Absolutely. So um, you can reach me at my website is uh, www.culpeohr.com. Uh, I will have on my website for our listeners um, some downloads. They can download some chapters of my book. Um, we also, uh, you can purchase my book on Amazon. We actually took uh, six um, best selling categories on Amazon, which I'm really mm, excited about. So go to Amazon and find our book. You can download it, it can be an ebook, or you can purchase the actual book if you like. And um, I'm very excited to help anyone uh, build their businesses better. So I would love to hear for, from some people. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your wisdom and time today. Greatly appreciated. Thank you so much, Molly. It's my pleasure. All right. That's a wrap listeners here. Listen right now. You are done listening to this podcast. No more excuses. You have to look at yourself in the mirror and your leaders on your team, get a huddle and look at what you can do to take a look at your employees, the people that you have on your building, in your building, 1099, what have you, and really do what you can to pour into them, to pour into your culture, because it is not going to change, period. End of story. That is a complete sentence. So stop saying it and start looking at you and what you can do to create progress, which creates happiness. 
So for all of our listeners today, if you'd like what you hear on our podcast, please feel free to visit our website at hiringandempoweringsolutions.com. So we love that you are listening to this podcast. Please drop us a line with any feedback, suggested topics you'd like to hear. And absolutely, we'd love to hear about your victories and your win in regards to creating entrepreneurs in an entrepreneur's world.